What's up, programming student? We're going to learn about looping. We have two goals. Number one, write an iterative block of code using the while loop. To iterate means to repeat. And number two, use loop boundary conditions, including sentinel values. A sentinel is a guardian value. So let's review the four types of algorithmic instructions. Number one, sequential. That means in order. Conditional is something we've learned before. That includes if statements. Repetitive is what we're going to learn today using the while loop. And concurrent means to do two instructions at the same time. Now, repetitive. An instruction that is executed repeatedly is called repetitive. And we repeat until a certain condition is met. For example, running left leg, right leg until I reach the finish line. And applying lotion. You apply lotion until the ashiness is all gone. Well, we want to repeat a block of code using Java. So what do we need to tell Java in order to repeat a block of code? Well, let's look at a while loop. Here's a while loop. It counts from 1 all the way to 100 by 1s. It has three main parts. The first part is the initialization. It creates a variable which we use to count how many times we loop, and it starts the variable off with an initial value, in this case, 1. Then we have the condition. The condition tells us under what condition do we repeat the loop. And obviously, if the condition is true, we repeat. If the condition is false, we don't repeat anymore. In this loop, we're repeating the system.out.println i. Well, now i needs to change. i needs to go from 1 to 2 to 3. In this case, we use an increment, i++. Do we always have to increment? No. In fact, we could also decrement if we were counting down from 100 all the way to 1. In that case, we change a couple values, the initialization, the condition, maybe the relational operator. The increment would change to i minus minus, and voila. So let's do a little review. What are the three parts? initialization, condition, and increment or decrement. Explain the role of each. What if each was missing? Well, I know if the increment or decrement was missing, I wouldn't change, and we get an infinite loop. And that's a type of error that we might see. What happens if I change the value of i? Well, the amount of times a loop repeats changes. So let's see a loop in action. Here, we see some code, a bunch of print lines, 1 through 10. That's not cool. We can use a loop to repeat these statements for us and count for us. Just to show you that this works, though, and this is the long way, there we go, 1 through 10. Cool, huh? No, not cool. Let's create a loop. First off, let's delete all this gobbledygook. Very inefficient kind of code, in fact. And let's first create an initialization. In this case, instead of i, let's call it count. Count's a nice name. And we're going to start count as 1 because we start counting at 1. And we're going to keep on counting while count is less than or equal to 10 because we want to go to 10. So we're, we're going to see 1 through 10 on the screen. Now what do we do as our body? Well, not s.o.pln, because that's an abbreviation. System.out.println, count. And notice how we use count and not i, because i was the name of the initialization variable for the previous example. Now we're using count. And we're going to say count plus plus. Count plus plus is the same thing as saying count equals count plus one. Let's compile it, and then let's see it in action. Here we go. Let's run it. There we go. We got one through ten, and in a lot less lines than before. The power of loops. Plus loops are just really cool anyway. Who would want to write out Sysnot.println1 all the way to 10 anyway. I mean, what if you had to go 1 to 100? 
Well, in this case, let's, let's do something different. Let's go from 10 to 1. See, I changed the count to 10. I changed the condition to count to 1, but I have to change the relational operator as well to greater than or equal to 1, because now I'm counting down. And instead of count plus plus, I need to change it to count minus minus. This is called a decrement. So I compile it, and let's see it in action. Voila, 10 to 1. How cool is that? That's called a decrement, and this is a decrement type of loop. So you can go up, and you can go down. Well, what else can you do? Well, let's try something a little different. Let's try to make it go on forever. This is called an infinite loop. Notice how I create my infinite loop here. I said count plus plus instead of count minus minus. What that's going to do is that the numbers are going to keep on going up and they're never going to stop because they were supposed to go down. This is called an infinite loop because if I had enough time, I could sit here forever. In fact, I can't because the computer would run out of memory at some point. And actually, the int variable can only hold up to a certain number of values anyway. So let's reset the virtual machine. And let's take a look at this code again. Now, there are other things I can do to my loop. Let's say I didn't say greater than or equal to, I said greater than 1. What should show up on the screen? Pause the code, pause this, and let's find out. All right, let's find out and see what happens. Well, there we go. We get 10 to the number 2, not 10 to 1, because we changed it from greater than or equal to 1 to greater than 1. So because of that, we only get to 2, and not all the way to 1. Take a look at the code again. That's greater than 1. So it only goes to 2. Now let's put the equal sign back, and now we have greater than or equal to 1. Well, actually, we don't have to go greater than or equal to 1. We could just go greater than 0. What will this create? Pause, think about it, and come back. Well, here we go. It gives us 1. So there are many ways to get the same output. We can go 10 to greater than or equal to 1. We could also go 10 to greater than 0. Both of them create the same output, 10 to 1. Well, this isn't cool enough. Let's uh, change the code around. Here I am importing the scanner because I'm going to get some user input. And the next loop we're going to look at is a user input loop. Here we don't know how many times we're going to repeat. We're going to actually ask the user to tell us how many times to repeat. So I create my scanner keyboard. Remember keyboard is just a name. You could call it scanner bubba or scanner in if you wanted to. But here I call it keyboard because I am getting input from the keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and ask the user uh, to enter a number. And what I'm going to do with that number is I'm going to count down from that number. So if they enter 10, it will count down to 1. If they enter something like 5, it will count down from 5. And if they enter 13, it's going to count down from 13. You see, I don't know what number I'm going to count down from because it's going to be a user inputted number. So there we go. Let's see what happens. Let's try the number, mm, yeah, five. That was okay. That was pretty cool. Let's try it again. 
Well, that worked as well. How nice. It's kind of hard to tell the input from the output. So let's just do a little editing of our code to make it more user friendly and pretty. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a I'm going to stick a print line in between the output and the input to designate or differentiate the output from the input. System.out.println your numbers are and by doing this I can tell the input from the output. And there we go. Now isn't that cool? Loops are awesome. Loops are your friend. Have a great day. Peace.